Whenever I meet a breast surgery patient and we talk about symmetry and asymmetry, we always remind them that a woman's breasts are like sisters, they're not twins. And the female breasts are never perfectly symmetrical. In fact, we wrote an article about that several years ago in the, in the journal. Uh, there's always some differential and asymmetry. There are, however, a variety of conditions that may cause unnatural looking differences between breasts. We call them congenital or developmental breast asymmetries. And of course, plastic surgeons are here to help correct them. We have tracked the physical outcomes of breast surgery for years, but the authors of this new and innovative hot topic in PRS have actually described some other aspects, the psychosocial aspects. And my guest today, Dr. Brian LeBeau from Boston Children's Hospital, one of my old stomping grounds in Boston, uh, and talk about the effect that this surgery has on young women with developmental breast asymmetry. So Brian, welcome. Thank you very much, Rob. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great. What is developmental or congenital breast asymmetry? Can you tell us what that means? It's a great question. Um, it really isn't one thing. It's actually a collection of poorly understood conditions um, that arises in what can be considerable differences, not just in breast size, but in breast shape, uh, as well as in breast position. And in the patients that uh, we're talking about, um, they have completed development and uh, usually about two thirds of the time have one breast that really has not developed normally. And this can sometimes be in association with uh, muscle or even rib differences. And about a third of the time, one of the breasts is substantially overgrown. But in general, we're talking about a two and a half cup size difference in the patients that we're talking about. So we have the, the normal degrees of asymmetry. Okay. So that's important. So there's significant asymmetries is really Correct. what we're talking about. So what did you find and, and how did this surgery affect their, these young women's quality of life? So we looked at about 45 young women with congenital breast asymmetry and we paired them with uh, unaffected young women uh, of the same age. So these are about 18 years of age on average. And we gave each group uh, validated quality of life uh, surveys. Okay. And we did this before surgery in the case of the surgical patients and at their first office visit for uh, the other group. And we followed them over time, six months, one year, three years, uh, five and 10 years later. And what we found is that before surgery, there was really a marked difference in quality of life between those patients with congenital breast asymmetry, particularly in the areas of self-esteem, uh, social and emotional functioning. And by six months after surgery, uh, those parameters uh, had uh, equaled uh, those of the uh, unaffected group. And the effect and the benefits of surgery seemed to extend uh, beyond five years and in some cases up to 10 years after surgery. That's amazing. We also noted that in your paper, you mentioned that there was an incredible difference between coverage uh, and legislative protections for breast reconstruction from cancer versus one for developmental breast asymmetry. What do you mean by that? And, and what's the message to the consumer about this? So since 1998, uh, there's been federal legislation, uh, the Women's uh, Health and uh, Cancer Right Act, Rights Act, um, that really mandates that insurance companies not only cover reconstruction of a breast that has undergone treatment for breast cancer, but that the contralateral unaffected side be addressed if the patient wants it to improve symmetry. So the statute really acknowledges that breast symmetry is an important part of women's health. And um, I don't think anyone would disagree with that uh, in that context. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, when you extend that to other diagnoses, there really isn't uh, that type of legislation. And so the insurers will often not, not cover it. And uh, I think uh, to a large degree, this is due to uh, people's um, confusion of what normal degrees of asymmetry are as opposed to what we're talking about now. It's not something you can visibly see. Many patients keep it covered. Right. And so there's a lot of misunderstanding about exactly what we're talking about. 
Right, and I think it comes down to the old adage with insurance companies. They obviously, it's cancer versus cosmetic, and they think that they will classify these, which is not correct, that they're cosmetic, and they're really developmental. So, correct. Yeah. So, well, I thank you. That was a superb explanation. Great article, Brian. Uh, congratulations. It's been a pleasure to, to interview you and to talk to you about this important topic. So if you or anyone that you know is suffering from some developmental breast asymmetry and is considering surgery, make sure you start a conversation with a board certified plastic surgeon or true expert like Dr. Brian LeBeau and his colleagues to find somebody that can help you or someone in your family that has this problem. And of course, you can find one at plasticsurgery.org.